OK, we are on page. 69. Um, there seems to be a problem with the English subtitles. So if you are watching at home, you can turn on YouTube's English subtitles. So here we have a comparison between formal and informal English. So in the first one, it is a pleasure to meet you just means nice to meet you. It's a formal way of talking. On the right hand is a very informal way of saying hello. You can just say hi or hi there. Again, on the left is very formal. May I trouble you for a pencil? Here the word trouble means uh, cause trouble for you. Uh, so the idea is that if the person gives you a pencil, it would cause them some trouble. So this is a very formal way of talking. Uh, on the right, you have a slightly more informal way of talking. Can I borrow a pencil, please? Again, on the left, would it be possible to speak with you for a moment? Is very formal. It simply means the same thing as. Do you have a minute? Got a minute? Can I talk to you for a minute? There's an informal way to say this. So. Uh, we have here some phrases. Which ones are formal, which ones are informal? Let me let me take you through this. Let's do this together. So see you later. Goodbye. How cool. Thank you. Uh, sure. Can I help you? How's it going? Hi, thanks. I want. How are you? Yeah, yes, of course. Hello, bye bye. Uh, um, all of these are informal. They are not formal. The first formal one is I'd prefer, which uh, simply means I want. So I'd prefer is more formal. Uh, then if we keep going, these are also informal. You guys. Uh, the word guys can also mean women, men and women. Guys is gender neutral. I'd like, which also just means I want. Uh, is more formal. You guys is informal. I'd like is more formal. Uh, and then yes is more formal. Uh, the informal way to say yes is yeah, right? This is informal. So yes is formal. Uh, do you want give me? These are both informal. I'll see you tomorrow is formal. The informal version is here. See you later. Uh, what do you want is informal and it's also kind of rude. In Chinese, this is more like ni shan zhe yang. So what do you want is informal. Would you like is asking the question that I'd like answers. So both of these are formal. Sure, no problem is informal. Could I please is formal. The informal way to ask this is can I? So could I please is formal. Ladies and gentlemen, formal. And that's very interesting is also formal. The informal way to say this is simply interesting. A complete sentence that's very interesting is more formal. 
Um, so below this, we have two examples of emails. This email is informal. So we can see what an informal email looks like. Beginning. Hi, George. Very informal beginning. There's going to be a sales meeting on September 19th at 3.30 in the boss's office. So not a specific room number, uh, but a general location, informal. By the way, is also kind of informal. A more formal way to say this is in addition or moreover. Thanks for the info I asked for. So info instead of information is informal. See you on the 19th or see you at the meeting or see you soon. Cheers, informal. And then uh, Bob, you'll notice that there's no space between the name and the message, uh, between the message and the sign, and there, the name and the sign are on the same line. So these are all informal uh, aspects of an email message. On the next page, we have a more formal version. Uh, so first of all, the names, full name, right, Mr. Here it's just like George and Bob. Here we have Mr. George, Mr. Bob. The title uh, in the informal email is uh, shortened, right? Meeting is MTG, period. In the more formal email, it is written out, sales meeting. Dear Mr. Jones, very formal opening. Uh, the colon, Ma Hall, is maybe too formal. Nobody uses a colon anymore. We always use a comma, uh, There should still be a space between these two lines. I'm writing to inform you. So basically, I'm telling you, very formal way to say this, of a sales meeting that's been scheduled for September 19th at 3.30 p.m. in the CEO's office. Also, I'd like to thank you for sending me the information I requested. I look forward to seeing you on the 19th. Sincerely, Bob Smith. So the information is exactly the same, but the language is more formal, more official. Um, so if you want to practice telling the difference between formal and informal. You can compare these two emails and the kind of language used in each email. Um, OK, let's go to page 71. Uh, this is a speaking practice. So uh, two people. One person is a passenger named Mr. Johnson Yang, or you can change it to a girl's name if you want. And you are calling to confirm your reservation to San Francisco. You also want to check if your request to upgrade to either business or first class has been confirmed. The other person is an airline airline ground staff member, and you see this information. So let's see. This is the record locator number. So this is the number for this passenger. Passenger name is here. Flight numbers. Uh, route. San Fran SFO is San Francisco. TPE is Taipei. Uh, dates. Departure and arrival times. Uh, and here it says uh, the passenger has business class on October 12th. So only one day. Only the first day he has business class. And then WL means wait list. 等候名单. 
He's waitlisted for first class and business class, but he is confirmed on economy. So this information. C is business class. F is first class. Y is economy class. And so the first part of the trip, he has business class. The second and third parts, he's still waiting to be confirmed. On the fourth part, he does not have an upgrade. He is in economy class. So with this information, please practice uh, the following dialogue here with your partner. Uh, let's see if there's any vocabulary you should know. Here. Uh, in English, if we don't understand a letter, we will give an example word to confirm the letter. So here, the staff member did not hear if it was a B or if it was a D. Uh, so the staff member is asking which word does the letter appear in to confirm the letter. Here, it doesn't look too good for first class. Here it means the probability is not very high. It's not very likely. Right, so business has a better chance. This is the wrong word. It should be you are. Uh, Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. You're most welcome. So let's uh, practice this first dialogue with a partner. I'll give you 10 minutes. Uh, if you don't remember the dialogue, it's fine. You only have to um, re uh, look at this part, right? The passenger is calling to confirm to confirm reservation and ask about upgrades.
OK, let's look at the second conversation practice uh, situation. Uh, so here again, one person is a flight attendant. The other person is a passenger. And the conversation is about food and drinks. So FA is the flight attendant. PAX is the passenger. Um, let's see, cream here is uh, Nayo. I think the other words should be fine. Let me heat it up for you. So let me make it hotter. So grab your partner and I'll give you another five minutes to practice this part. OK, on the next page, page 73. Um, we have an email. And some questions. So let's look at this email. June 28, 2000. From George Mitchell to Linda Yang. CC Peter Brown. Uh, the subject is next visit. So George is sending this to Linda, but Peter will also get this email. Dear Ms. Yang, I'm sorry for not replying to your email dated 31 April as our computer had a virus. So as means because Virus here just means computer problem. So this is a reply, right? A replying to your email. This is a reply. So there's an email that happened before this. Yes, I enjoyed the food very much. And hope to try some new dishes when I visit Taipei next month. I especially liked the traditional soybean milk you introduced me to. Soybean milk, doujiang. So it looks like the uh, one question from the previous email is, how did you like the food? Next paragraph. For your information, Mr. Brown is very interested in your price of two US dollars per can, or 48 US dollars for a case of 24 cans. He liked the quality of your tea samples. So they're talking about cans of tea. He looks forward to meeting Mr. Huang in Taipei, perhaps in October on his way to Thailand. So it looks like the other question in the first email is, um, this is our offer. Do you want to buy tea from us? I will write to you to schedule a meeting when Mr. Brown's travel schedule has been confirmed. Best regards, Mr. George Mitchell. So George is writing on behalf of Mr. Brown. 
布朗先生在写信 ，on behalf of 代表。He's writing to Miss Yang, but Miss Yang is writing on behalf of Mr. Huang. Right, so it looks like these are two secretaries writing to each other. Okay, let's look at the questions. Oh, actually, we should also look at the、um, email address. So Mitchell and Brown work for Price Water Horse, and、uh, Yang works for Hewlett Packarder. These are both kind of funny、uh, jokes. Price Water House is an accountancy, 会计公司 and Hewlett Packard sells computers. Uh, the company names are slightly different. I think that's kind of funny. Okay, so questions: Was George ever in Taipei? How do you know?、Uh, I think he was right, because he enjoyed the food. So he has come to Taipei before. Who is George's boss?、Uh, we just talked about this. His boss is. Peter Brown. What did George show Mr. Brown? George showed Mr. Brown、uh, the tea samples, samples of tea. Sample here means yang ping. What does Linda's company make? Tea. Who is Linda's boss? Mr. Huang. Do you think Linda and George are of the same level? 那么位阶是不是一样？呃、uh, ，We talked about this. I think yes. Both of them are writing for somebody else, and they are arranging a trip. So it looks like both of them are secretaries. Okay. On the next page, we have one final tip for writing. Seek feedback from others. 寻求他人回馈 The idea here is that everybody has blind spots. 每个人都有盲点 So if you ask other people to give you suggestions, your essay or your writing can be better. The key point is here: you do not have to agree with all of the feedback. But you should listen closely. So I often tell my writing students,、um, your readers have the right to tell you what they think, but you, the author, have to decide what to do with that information. You don't have to listen to all of it, but you do. Uh, you don't have to follow all of it, but you do have to listen and try to understand why somebody is giving you this suggestion. Sometimes people will give you feedback or suggestions, and they think that the problem is in one place, but you, as the author, know that the problem is in a different place. So again, the author should listen to everybody's advice, but only follow or do、uh, what you, as the author, think is the right thing to do. Okay, seventy-five. Let's do some listening.、Uh, so let's take a look at these questions first. Um. Ah, okay. So this one is、uh, giving you two sentences that sound very similar. It's asking you to choose the correct sentence. So the first one: Is this your first time to the states, sir? Or is this your fifth time to the states, sir? Number two: That'll be fifteen dollars and fifty cents, please. Or That'll be fifty dollars and fifteen cents, please. Number three, let's meet in the lobby at eight fifteen, or let's meet Bobby at eight fifty. 
right? These all sound very similar. You want to choose the correct one. Number four, I'd like to fly on December 10th or I'd like to fly on September 10th. Five, have you talked to your travel agent yet or have you talked to your travel agency yet? Six, please contact me at 2868-5432. Or is the number 28869432? Number seven, our flight to Thailand leaves at 10 in the morning. Or our flight to Tainan leaves at 11 in the morning. Number eight, Mr. Lee is a light traveler. Or Mr. Lee is a flight traveler. Light here means the opposite of heavy, so a light traveler does not bring a lot of stuff. A flight traveler is someone who, who travels by plane. Number nine, you should take one check-in and one carry-on, or you should take one jacket and one carry-on. Jacket, Whitehall. Number 10, you will need a visa if you're going to China, or you'll need a visit if you're going to China. OK, let's listen to this dialogue and choose the correct sentence. OK, let's compare answers. Uh, the answers are. B, is this your fifth time in the States? 
B, that'll be $50.15. A, let's meet in the lobby at 8.15. B, I'd like to fly on September 10th. A, have you talked to your travel agent yet? A, please contact me at 28685432. B, our flight to Tainan leaves at 11 in the morning. B, Mr. Lee is a flight traveler. B, you should take one jacket and one carry-on. And A, you will need a visa if you're going to China. Let's listen again and try to catch uh, the specific sentence as the tape says this. OK, I want to focus more on number eight. In English, there is a pronunciation rule that says in a compound noun, the stress is always on the first syllable. So look at these two. Light traveler. Traveler is a noun, but light is an adjective. So the stress is on the second word. Mr. Lee is a light traveler. Right, the stress is on this syllable. Tra. Mr. Lee is a light traveler. But flight is a noun. Two nouns together make a compound noun. So the stress is on the first syllable. Mr. Lee is a flight traveler. So adjective plus noun, Mr. Lee is a light traveler. Noun plus noun, Mr. Lee is a flight traveler. 
right? Light traveler, flight traveler. The stress is different. OK, let's look at the next listening practice. You've just returned to your hotel room. Again, hotel noun, room noun. Two nouns together make one compound noun, so the stress is on the first syllable. Hotel room, not hotel room. It's hotel room. Uh, stress is in the first word, hotel room. Uh, OK, so you get back to your room. Listen to the following message on your hotel phone. And answer the following questions. So you're listening to a phone message. Who's calling? Is it Mr. Rhodes from Thailand? Mr. Rhodes from Amsterdam? Andre from Prime? Andre from Prime, some guy's name. Or Andre from the travel agency. All right, so this name is Andre. Number two, how are you going to get to Bangkok through Mangu? Flying on TG456 in business class. Flying on Thai 456 in economy class. Flying on TG915 in business class. Or flying on Thai 945 in business class. Number three. Actually, let's talk about number two. You, there's a fast way to make sure you get the correct answer. Three business class, one economy class. So if you hear economy class, you don't have to care about the flight number. You can just choose B. If you hear business class, and you also hear Thai, you don't have to worry about the number because there's only one answer that is Thai plus business class. Only when you hear TG do you have to care about the number. So hopefully that will make it easier to answer this question. Number three, according to the message, what will happen at 9.45 p.m.? You will depart from Amsterdam. You will check in your baggage. You will pick up your boarding pass. Or you will arrive in Bangkok. Number four, what don't you have with you on your trip? So you don't have it. A, a credit card. B, traveler's checks. C, check in baggage. D, a flight itinerary. Uh, itinerary means schedule, flight schedule. Number five, where will you pick up your boarding pass? A, at the check-in counter. B, at the hotel travel agency. C, on the flight. D, at the hotel delivery desk. Number six, how can you pay for this upgraded ticket? A, only with frequent flyer miles. B, with frequent flyer miles or credit card. C, with traveler's checks or miles. D, with credit card or traveler's checks. Number seven, how can you contact the caller? A, call or visit the travel agency. B, 
visit or call Bangkok. C, visit or call Thai Airlines. D, visit or call Amsterdam. OK, so let's listen to these uh, to the uh, phone message. OK, so the answers are number one. D is Andre from the travel agency. Number two, A, TG 456 business class. Number three, 945 PM is D. You will arrive in Bangkok. Number four, C, check in baggage. Number five, at the hotel travel agency. This one is a bit harder. Uh, the caller says, um, I'm Andre from the prime travel agency in the hotel. So the travel agency is in the hotel. So where can you pick it up? At the hotel travel agency. He says, uh, you can come find me. And he is at the hotel travel agency. Number six, D, with credit card or traveler's checks. He says you cannot pay with frequent flyer miles. So if an answer has miles, it's the wrong answer. Number seven, A, call or visit the travel agency. He says you can come find me. I will be here. You can call me at the travel agency. So now that you know the information, let's listen to this again and try to really understand what's going on.
Okay, let's take a 10 minute break.
OK, let's do lesson two, the bonus lesson on page 17. We're having a meeting. So this one will be about meetings. Uh, let's look at the warm up questions to get you thinking about this topic. One, what types of meetings do you usually attend? How often? Attend here just means go to. Two. Who attends these meetings? Who calls the meetings? Zhaoji, call. Who runs the meetings? Zhu Ci, to run a meeting. Number three, what is one of the best meetings you've ever been to and why? What is the worst meeting you can remember attending and why? Number five, how useful are meetings? Can the issues covered at a meeting be handled any other way? The answer usually is yes. So on the next page, let's take a look at the text. Dana's journal. Dana is a man's name. October 3. I'm so excited. Here I've just finished my second month on the new job and I've had the opportunity to really show my boss what I can do. I think I've really impressed her by talking to our customers several times a week on the phone and through email. She has even said how pleased she was with my ability to communicate in English. Today, our customers came to Taiwan and I met them at the airport. I was kind of nervous waiting for them to appear, but once I heard their voices, I felt more at ease. I guess they are as kind as they sound on the phone. On the way to their hotel, they asked questions about Taiwan. That wasn't too hard. October 4. Terrible. I feel just terrible. Today I was to prepare the agenda for our meeting and do some introductions and report. Only when I stood up to speak, I couldn't think of any of the right things to say. Why, oh why didn't I listen to my English teacher last year when she gave us examples of how to use English to run a meeting? I could talk to them in the car yesterday, so I didn't think it was going to be hard in the meeting, but my boss was there and everything just seemed so formal and serious. I wore comfortable clothes because I didn't want to be too stiff, but they wore suits. My boss looked at me funny, I suppose because I didn't wear the right clothes. Then the customer wasn't willing to talk about one of the items on the agenda and nobody knew what to say next. My boss was angry at me for everyone being embarrassed, but she couldn't say it in front of them. Besides that, once we started talking about one item, it took almost all morning and one of our office staff had to keep running out to get more information, other files and product samples. I hadn't told them what to prepare. Needless to say, by the end of the day, nobody was very happy, especially me. I feel like crying. I'm so upset. October 5. Today I got up really early. I wanted to try to figure out what I had done wrong and how to avoid the same problems next time I have to plan and run a meeting. That's assuming my boss doesn't fire me for what happened. She did say hello to me this morning, so maybe I still have a job next week. Anyway, I made a list of rules for conducting a meeting. I hope I can follow them next time. And on the next page, we have his rules. We can look at this later. First, uh, let's go back and look at this in more detail. This is from his journal, Yuji, uh, otherwise called a diary. So the language is very informal. He's talking to himself. 
Uh, his second month on the new job, so he's a new uh, employee. In the entry for October 3, he seems very excited. He seems like he, he's very confident. Um, he thinks he's doing a good job. Um, sh his boss is pleased with him. Which means that she is happy about his performance. To meet somebody at the airport, Jie Ji. He, he uses the very informal kinda. This means kind of. Uh, to feel more at ease, to feel more relaxed, not as nervous. The word kind here means nice. They're nice people, they're kind people. So October 3 seems fine, but October 4 is a disaster. He was, he was supposed to prepare the agenda for our meeting. Agenda just means what we are going to talk about in this meeting. Yichen. Uh, do introductions and report, give a report. Only here just means but. But uh, when he stood up, he couldn't think of anything to say. Uh, everything was formal and serious. So he's running the meeting but he wore comfortable clothes, xiuxian fu zhuang. He didn't want to be too stiff. Stiff means like rigid, hard to bend, tai ying, ying lang. Tai zhu si, here it means too formal in a bad way. To be stiff is to be formal in a bad way. So he wanted not to be too formal. But his customers wore suits. So it's clear that his clothing was not formal enough. Also, my boss looked at me funny. This is not correct. It's very common in spoken English, but technically this should be the adverb funnily. Uh, so my boss looked at me funny just means she looked at me in a very strange way. So funny does not here mean it's funny. It means strange. Uh, then the customer wasn't willing to talk about one of the items on the agenda. So if the agenda is what you are going to talk about in the meeting, then each thing is called an item, xiang mu. So one custom, the customer did not want to talk about one of the items. It's very strange. Uh, nobody knew what to say next. His boss was angry at him, but she couldn't say that in front of the customers. Uh, and then for one item, the staff had to go out to get information, files, and product samples, something yangben, because he did not tell them to prepare. So a terrible meeting. On the next day, he wakes up to figure out uh, what went wrong and to come up with a plan. Uh, for the next meeting, assuming my boss doesn't fire me. Um, so if he has a next meeting, he wants to be prepared. Uh, she did say hello, so maybe I still have a job next week. So, so maybe he won't get fired. Some rules for conducting a meeting or running a meeting or holding a meeting uh, are all fine. So here are the rules. 
Dana's rules for conducting a meeting. One, set appropriate goals. What is it that you want to accomplish with this meeting? Communicate information, train people, or sell a particular item or idea. Two, be as organized as possible. Create a well-prepared agenda that will discuss all of the important information. Make sure that this information is in a logical order. This will save time and will not confuse your audience. Say what you're going to be talking about, talk about it, and then state again what you just talked about. It's important to reinforce your ideas and clarify the information that you provide. Know what you're going to talk about and do not simply read the information to your audience. You will feel more confident and in control if you know this information before speaking in front of the other people. This will also help you be less nervous. Three, prepare the participants. Make sure that everyone has a copy of the meeting agenda before the meeting takes place. If there are going to be other speakers or people involved, make sure that they are also prepared with all of the necessary equipment and information. Four, be flexible and firm. Be flexible in allowing enough time and equal participation during the meeting discussions. However, be firm in that you do not allow the discussions to stray away from the intended goals you have set for the meeting. Five, never assume anything. Make sure you know if people can hear you, see you, and also if everyone has seen or heard the information being provided. Check for understanding by asking questions. Six, always act professionally. Make sure you're dressed appropriately. Be aware of your body language, hand gestures, eye contact, and so on. Tone of voice and energy level. These are some pretty good rules. Let's take a closer look. First one, set appropriate goals. 适当目标. This is very important. Everybody should be very clear about why they are having this meeting. If people don't know why they are at a meeting, the meeting will go very, very slowly. So make sure everybody knows what do you want to accomplish Datsun, with this meeting. Uh, three common goals to communicate information, to give information. To train people, or to sell an item or idea. The other one, second one is to be organized. Prepare an agenda. This information should be in a logical order. Uh, so think about in the meeting, what do you want to talk about first, and then second, and then third. Uh, the agenda controls the meeting. The order of the items controls the meeting. Uh, so think carefully, which one do you want to talk about first? Uh, sometimes people can get uh, frustrated or angry about one thing, or maybe one thing will take more time, so you should plan the order of the agenda. When you talk about the item, say what it is, talk about it, and then say what you just talked about. So prepare everyone, talk about it, and then help everyone remember what you just talked about. Now, this is a good rule for giving speeches, presentations, talking in public. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Say, I'm going to talk about this, then talk about it, 
and then say, we just talked about this. It helps your audience to be prepared and it helps them to remember. And he says it is to reinforce your ideas. Reinforce means jia uh, qiang. It comes from the word enforce. E N F O R C E. Uh, if you don't add the re, the original word is enforce, means to implement, to execute, zixing. But reinforce, to enforce again, means to strengthen, jia uh, qiang. He says, do not simply read the information. So in, you should read it, but also you should explain what you read. You should really try to communicate with everybody in the meeting. And he says, if you know this information before the meeting, you will feel more confident and in control. So if you feel nervous about speaking in public, prepare your information, know your information, and that can help you feel more confident. So this is to help yourself prepare. Next, you have to make sure everybody else is prepared. Make sure they all know what will be discussed and that they have all of the necessary equipment and information. After you prepare during the meeting, be flexible and firm. Flexible to give everybody the chance to, to talk in the meeting. But firm, you do not allow the discussions to stray away from the intended goals. Stray, piaoli, pianli. So, uh, stray animals are animals that have strayed away from life as a pet. So, stray animals. So, be firm that you keep to your goals, uh, you, that you do try to do what you want to do in this meeting. Never assume anything. You have to make sure. Uh, check for understanding. Always act professionally. So clothing, body language, tone of voice, and energy level. So this is all pretty good advice. If you need to speak in public or run a meeting, conduct a meeting, these are some things you can remember. OK, let's look at the vocabulary. Uh, agenda, the things you will talk about in a meeting. Goal, what you want to do. Participant, somebody who participates. Someone who joins. Sample, Yangbun, Yangping. Staff, uh, people who work in a place or in a company. The word staff refers to everybody who works in the place. As a ji he mingzi. So in grammar, it is singular, it has a dan shu. But in terms of the concept, uh, if you want to talk about one person on the staff, you would say a staff member. This is one person. But the word staff means everybody. Assume to use information you have not confirmed. 假设. 
Conduct means here just means to run or to host a meeting. To fire, Cao Yu, reinforce, strengthen, Jia Chang. To run a meeting is to conduct a meeting. Appropriate, si dang de. Fired somebody who has been fired. Bei Cao Yu de ren. Flexible means you're willing to allow some changes. You have flexibility. Intended. This comes from the word intention. Yong yi. So intended. 原本的用意是什么？呃、uh, ，We just saw intended goals. 原本用意的目标。And stiff, which is too formal. 过于正式。So uh, here we have a few new words that we did not see in the reading. Uh, let's see, minutes, meeting minutes, 会议记录 Old business. These are items in a meeting that were not solved in the previous meeting. 就是这是上次会议没有解决的项目，呃，这一次会议继续讨论。New business. This is new stuff for for this meeting. Call to order. This means to begin the meeting. Call the meeting to order means to begin the meeting. Adjourn. 散会 to end the meeting. Adjourn. Uh, maybe you can see the word journey. 旅途旅行 So to adjourn just means you want to leave and you want to go somewhere else. So to end the meeting. To move with no object. 不及物的 move. Uh, well, not not no object. The object is a noun phrase. Uh, 就是它不是不及物，它及物是一句话 To move that something something something. Move here means uh to propose something new. T E T N. Uh, 所以它后面一定是接名词短句，就是一句话。提什么案 To second, 复议 So if somebody moves to do something, you have to wait for somebody else to second uh, the proposal. And then the word table. Table means to stop discussion. 搁置 uh, So I want to table this item for next time. So if you table, OK, so if you have new business, And you table that business. Next time, it becomes old business. Um, I should also say the word table in meetings has the opposite meaning in British English. In British English, to table something means to start discussing something. So English, English, and every time English, this word is exactly the same. Every time English is table. 英式英文是开始讨论。呃、uh, ，but we are learning American English. Okay, so take these words and、uh, fill in the blanks for these questions.、Uh, I will give you five, ten minutes. I'll give you ten minutes.
OK, let's compare answers. Number one, what are the rules? To conduct. To conduct a successful meeting. Number two, always prepare an. Agenda. Agenda that lists Chu. The topics to be covered Hangai. In the meeting. Three, be firm, make sure. Participants, Chinese participants. Stay on the agenda topics to be on topic. To stay on topic. So if you go off topic, just and don't talk about other things. Four, make sure the participants understand the intended intended goals of the meeting. Number five, don't where is it? Assume. Assume. Don't assume participants will know everything. Make sure you tell them what they need to know. Number six, make sure you wear appropriate, appropriate clothes. Number seven, relax. While most meetings are formal, try not to be too stiff. Stiff. Number eight, we can't agree on this today, so let's table. Table. The discussion until the next meeting. Number nine, I missed the last meeting, so I need to read the. Minutes. Minutes. To find out what happened. Number 10, we have some. Old business. Old business. To take care of. We started this discussion in last month's meeting and now we have to make a decision. OK, the next page, this is the reading exercises. One, uh, let's do these together. One, what other phrase in Dana's diary means the same as really showed my boss what I can do? So let's see. Uh, to really impress her is the answer. To really impress her. Um, Number two, what phrase is used which means the opposite of kind of nervous? What is the opposite? Um, to feel more at ease. To feel more at ease. Number three, what is the difference in Dana's mood from October 3 to October 4? Why is it different? October 3, he's confident because he's doing a good job. Number four, October 4, he's very upset because he did a terrible job of running the meeting. Number four, what would be the right clothes for a business meeting? Uh, if you're a man, a suit and tie. If you're a woman, uh, some kind of formal uh, business clothing and either suit pants or a long dress. So it's a blouse and a jacket. Sangyi and white tall. Uh, white tall, just my white tall suit jacket. Five. Why was it hard for Dana to use English in the meeting? Um, because 
the meeting was formal. It says that um, everyone was so formal and serious. So maybe because it was too formal. For some reason, it's using the name Dana for a woman. I guess both could work. Number six, why did Dana make a list of rules? She wants to remember how to run a meeting well. B. Number seven, which of the following helps you to organize a meeting? C, agenda. Eight, which of the following will not help you feel less nervous when running a meeting? Read to people does not help. If you know your information, set goals and dress appropriately, you will feel less nervous. But reading to people does not help. Number nine, what is the best match for the meaning of never assume anything? So which of these has the same meaning? B, make sure or check about everything. Don't assume. Number 10, what is the main point of Dana's journal and rules? So what is the main point of this reading? Um, I think it's D. Dana's bad experience running a meeting in English resulted in, aha, see, is it a man or a woman? Either one. Creating and sharing a useful list of rules. So Dana learns from a bad experience. Uh, OK, let's stop here.